and welcome to Cooking Caribbean. Today we venture to a small farming village of Kurnahan to enjoy the indigenous cuisine. How to get to Kurnahan? One must pass in a river swamp. The Nariva Swamp is the largest and most diverse wetland system on the island and is considered a national treasure. It encompasses an area of 6,000 hectares, approximately 15 square kilometers, and is considered a wetland of international importance under the 1954 Ramsar Convention. This freshwater swamp contributes to its rich biodiversity by providing numerous habitats for a wide variety of flora and fauna. Kernahan is located on the boundaries of the Nuriva Swamp and has over the years become a tourist destination for locals and foreigners. People come here to enjoy the peace and quiet of this picturesque village, as much as to savor the many tasty meals prepared for them by the hospitable villagers. Dishes like paratha roti with curried pomsetir, conch and cascadoo. Cascadura or cascadoo resembles a small catfish. According to local legend, whoever eats the cascadoo is sure to end their days back on the island of Trinidad. When fishing for cascadoo, one's main fishing gear is the cast net. Cascaduras tend to live and swim close to the swamp bed. However, they usually surface for air when the water level drops and make themselves vulnerable to eagle fishermen. When fishing for cascadura, the main fishing gear is the cast net. The net is skillfully cast and carefully pulled in, bringing with it the catch of the day. The meals served here are seasoned with fresh local produce like these cherry peppers picked from the backyard. Conch or conchs as it's commonly called is the second best known edible snail, the first being the escargot from France. Belonging to the family of gastropod mollusks, conchs can vary from large marine snails to medium-sized freshwater snails that are nonetheless equally delicious. The popularity of conchs on the islands began centuries ago with the indigenous Arawak people. They harvested these desirable creatures for various purposes, sometimes for aphrodisiac and medicinal purposes, and other times, like their descendants today, just for a good meal. Kongs too live at the bottom of the swamp and are quite easy to catch once you get into the water.
Pomsite is a shortened way of saying palm de seeds. Its scientific name is Spondia cetheria. This fruit is originally from Tahiti and was brought to the island possibly by the first conquerors or the slave traders. These trees can be found throughout the islands and Central and South America. They can grow to heights of 75 to 80 feet and produce clusters of green oblong fruit which then ripens to a golden and yellow color. The edible fruit is very rich in vitamin C and is quite versatile as it can be cooked when green or made into condiments. When ripened, it can be used to make jams and juices. Curried pomsite is a great accompaniment to a meal as it provides a tummy sweetened flavor. The thick green outer skin is first peeled and then cut into wedges. You do something, you know. Can I go bring another knife? Like Pomsite, to get at the edible portion of Kongs, its outer protection has to be removed. This is easily done by breaking open the hard shell and cutting away the fleshy bits inside. Cascadu has to be thoroughly cleaned before it can be seasoned. The fins are cut off and the intestines and gills removed. The fish are washed in a mixture of fresh lime juice, baker's flour and water. They are scrubbed clean to remove any remaining dirt from under their hardened scales.
They are washed again in another bath of fresh lime juice and water and then set aside. The conch flesh is also washed in fresh water and baker's flour. After it has been washed several times, the meat is gently softened and cut into small pieces. Seasonings are then prepared using mainly fresh herbs. Sives and onions are finely chopped. Garlic is crushed with salt. Cherry peppers are also finely chopped. These seasonings are added to the cascadoo in measured amounts. Cilantro, cives, garlic, pepper and onion. Seasonings are also mixed in with the cob. Diced tomatoes are added to the cascadu. While the meats are being seasoned, a dried coconut is cut open to make fresh coconut milk. The dried coconut jelly is extracted from its husk. Curry powder is also added to the fish and conch and mixed thoroughly.
The fish is stuffed with the seasoning and curry mixture. The dried coconut is grated and water added. The milk is squeezed from the grated coconut, which is fed to the eagerly awaiting ducks and chickens. The fresh coconut milk is strained and set aside. An iron pot is put on the fire, oil is poured in and left to get hot. When heated, the prepared cascadoo is added. Stir. Covered and left to cook on a low fire for about 15 minutes. Parata rotis were brought to the island by East Indian indentured labourers decades ago. This type of East Indian bread is sometimes mistaken for chapati, a flat unleavened bread, but really it's a flakier version that is arguably tastier. Parata rotis serve as a fantastic accompaniment to any meal, as its manageable texture allows one to easily scoop up sauces and meats, bringing with it a flavor of its own that only serves to enhance the meal. To make parata roti, a combination of flour, salt, sugar and water is lightly needed. A little oil is added to the mixture and is set aside. After about 20 minutes, the cascadoo is done. A smaller pot is then put on the fire with some oil. Two tablespoons of brown sugar is added to the hot oil which quickly caramelizes. The conch is added, stirred and left to cook. On a floured surface, the roti dough is made in grapefruit-sized balls, sprinkled with loose flour and flattened by hand. Butter is then evenly spread onto the dough, which is cut and rolled into a circular shape, carefully folded and again set aside.
The conch is ready after about 20 minutes. The parata dough is now flattened and rolled with a rolling pin. The rolled out dough is evenly spread onto the hot baking sheet. When it is cooked on one side, it is turned and again smeared with oil. The roti is turned continuously so that neither side is overcooked. When the roti is sufficiently cooked on both sides, it is beaten with a dabbler to give it its unique flaky texture. Curried pomsete is our last dish on today's show. For this, a combination of seasonings, curry powder and water is emptied into a pot with hot oil and stirred. The pomsete wedges are mixed in. Salt is then added. Then some anchar masala and brown sugar. Stirring occasionally, the green fruit becomes tender and ready to eat after about 20 minutes. Well, that's it for today. Until next time, we look forward to you joining us again on Cooking Caribbean.